China is the enemy of the sea. Before we continue, I have to reiterate that this is not a race thing I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about Chinese people as a race. I'm talking about a nationality thing. I'm talking about mainland China. The attitudes and society that has allowed the current crisis to exist. I have some court documents here, which is going to prove my point. I got a lot of them. I'm going to take a brief look at this later. But let's just start by giving you a little bit of a background. If you've watched some of my videos, you'll know that I've spoken about this briefly before. China has completely outfished the waters off the coast of China, and so their fishing trawlers must seek alternatives. And the alternatives are the rest of the entire world. Clandestine Chinese fishing has decimated the fish stocks off the coast of South Africa, my country, and most of the African coast, where corrupt leaders are easily paid to turn a blind eye, while local fishermen and communities suffer greatly. Why is it that China gets a free pass on this? Where are the Greta Thunbergs of the world on how China is disproportionately outstripping the ocean of its fish? There is no catch and release or sustainable fishing in the modern Chinese mentality. China, mainland China, went through devastating starvation. They went through devastating famine. It was the results of the Great Leap Backwards and the cultural devolution the Communist Party put into place and it led to the starvation of millions of people. I mean, just think about that for a minute. Millions of people die from starvation. You had situations where people were selling their children as food. Cannibalism was a thing. It's terrible. It's a horrible, horrible pockmark on the history of China. And it's something that the Communist Party would very soon forget. But unfortunately, people don't forget. It's now bred into society. It's bred into the psyche, and especially the people that still survived today that lived through that time, they will never forget the bad times of starvation. And what this has resulted in is it's resulted in a situation where if there's something to take now, they will take it now without any regard for the future and what might happen in the future. If the food is there, eat it now. In fact, the most common greeting in China when you meet someone is they ask you, Chifan la mei, which means, have you eaten? It's that ingrained into the culture that a normal like how are you doing how are you doing is have you eaten i don't know if you've been keeping up with the news but just recently a massive flotilla of chinese fishing vessels was surrounding the galapagos islands 300 of them they fished for 73,000 hours non-stop pulling up tons and tons and tons of sea life fish squid everything else from around the galapagos islands completely destroying the habitats there of course, completely unchecked. They're a menace. These Chinese fishing flotillas that go around the seas, around the entire world, just stripping the oceans bare. And the reason they do this is the seas surrounding mainland China no longer contain enough fish to feed the populace. In fact, it's almost impossible. And especially since China goes through these, these terrible situations, like recently with the swine flu that wiped out a huge amount, 50% of the pork in mainland China, you have food shortages. And the big floods that have happened recently, you know, that started up in the Three Gorges Dam area and basically wiped out the breadbasket of China, you have food shortages. So what does China do in order to replenish and feed the population is they send out these massive fishing flotillas around the globe, destroying the sea life everywhere they go. And the problem is there is no sustainable fishing. They don't believe in sustainable fishing. When you see these fishing trawlers pull up fish, they will take something the size of a pinhead. They don't care. There's no catch and release in China. You have to understand. It's take, 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 take. So not only do we have these dangerous fishing flotillas going around destroying the, the world's oceans, we also have things like in the South China Sea where they build these artificial islands and they bring in these big... Uh, ships and machinery that dig up the seabed to in order to make these artificial islands and destroy entire ecosystems. I mean, this goes really far. And I'm getting really tired of people not paying attention to this. Whenever you hear about climate activists and, uh, you know, these ecological activists like Greta Thunberg and stuff, it's always like waving fingers at uh, first world developed countries saying, hey, you know, you better, you know, reduce your carbon footprint 
you're running our future type things. Meanwhile, you've got mainland China sending these fishing flotillas around the world, destroying the ocean and the sea life. It's ridiculous. But let's move on past that, okay? Because that, that is what it is. You've got fishing vessels out there doing this, these dastardly things. And I guess in some ways, some countries can prevent them from entering into, uh, you know, their sort of ecological areas and completely destroying them. Let's move on to these documents. Let's see, what do they say? This says, Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. That's where I live. And uh, it's versus, okay, the the defendants. Let's read a couple of the names here. Uh, Wei Jun Chen, um, Chun Yang Gu, Yang Hua Ge, Zhong Mei Cui, uh, Ji, Ji Hua Li. Sorry, there's actually back backs of these pages. I think you're noticing that all of these names are Chinese names, okay? In fact, out of all of these names on this document, there are 45. Two of them are Vietnamese, the rest are Chinese names. I'm going to link this document down in the description so that you can go look for yourself. But every single one of these names, well, except for the two, are Chinese names. Hong Xing Sun, Li Zhang. Of course, I recognize these and they're uniquely Chinese names. They're not from any other part of the world. What's going on with this? Well, let me read you some excerpts from a little article. Here's this article, and, and here's the thing that really annoys me, is political correctness is getting in the way of us protecting our environment here. Because if you read the articles, everything out there, it makes it sound like this is a, a, just a problem of just LA people going down and, and uh, you know, destroying the local wildlife. But let's, let's read this. It says, Hordes of people are descending on fragile Los Angeles area tide pools to scrape starfish, mussels and other sea life from the rocks, city officials say. Uh, the Los Angeles City Attorney's Office announced charges Thursday against 45 people accused of overfishing, fishing without licenses and taking restricted species at White Point Beach in San Pedro. <clears throat> so let me just go on here. It says, um, State wardens have found crowds of people armed with everything from crowbars to kitchen tongs prying sea life from the tide pools at the beach since May. Most of the violations involved exceeding daily bag limits and fishing without a license. Um, one photo showed 142 pounds of mussels harvested from the tide pools by a single person and the daily limit is 10 pounds of mussels per person. The article then goes on to say that uh, they blame it on social media posts. And yes, you see, this is something that happens within the Chinese community, is social media groups on WeChat and various other platforms, all in Chinese, they get together. And you have to understand that this is part of the culture when Chinese people immigrate or go visit overseas. They tend to stick in their own little bubble. They tend to uh, communicate with each other in Chinese. They don't really integrate they tend to get all their news from China. I know this because, you know, my wife is Chinese and she's the same. She's part of all the Chinese mothers groups, you know, people that have just given birth to children. And they discuss all the all the challenges that they face living in America, for instance, as a Chinese person, uh, you know, because they, they want to know how to get their Chinese medicine or, you know, all the different things and how to deal with a different culture and it's understandable it's kind of normal when you move to another country for that to happen but what happens in these little groups is somebody will find out that there's sea life and you can take sea life and they'll send a message out to say oh just just a mere fader just a how true and you could sway na which basically means you know hey there's free this is free you can go take what you want you know it tastes good you know that kind of thing and you'll find that a lot of the people within these Chinese circles will go and grab the stuff because now they see an opportunity. You only need to look at Chinese tourists from mainland China to see that this is a real phenomenon. It's a grab now while you can situation. We've seen this countless times. I'm sure you've all seen the video of the, the shrimp grab or the fruit grab or the whatever grab. It does happen. It's a part of society. Like I said, it can all be traced back to the starvation and, you know, the, the terrible famines that China went through very recently, you know, still within some people's lifetime. So anyway, that's what this is all about, is they arrested 45 of these people. Now, if you read this article, like I said, you would think that it's like a, it's a problem with local people in Los Angeles going and taking advantage of uh, the sea life and overfishing because you are allowed to take, like they say here, 10 pounds of mussels. You're allowed to legally, if you have a fishing license, go and do that. 
But what they found is that people are going there and just stripping it bare and taking as much as they can carry, not having a fishing license. And it's all down to language barrier and cultural differences. And this proves it. The fact that all of them are Chinese, except for two, which are uh, Vietnamese. And um, it proves that this is a, a mainland Chinese problem. This is not just a problem. You don't have homeless people going down to the beach and doing this. These are just average, everyday Chinese citizens that are here either on holiday or they're here living with their family or whatever the case. This also used to happen in South Africa, or still does. When I was living in South Africa, you would often read about the police raiding Cyril Dean, and Cyril Dean is the Chinatown in South Africa in Johannesburg, and they would find, you know, huge tubs full of endangered wildlife, huge buckets of things like perlamon, abalone, various things like that, which have also been just harvested from the coast in Cape Town, Durban, places like that, where they'll just go either hire people or do it themselves and just scrape up everything they can without regards to local laws, licenses, and that kind of thing. And again, because it's a kind of a cutoff bubble, they're usually either left alone or people don't know what's going on because of the language barrier and they get away with it. Now, the people that this hurts the most are Chinese Americans and Asian Americans in general, because a lot of people, let's be honest, can't tell the difference between a, a mainland Chinese person or a Japanese person. And let, let me once again remind you that we're not seeing Korean names here. We're not seeing Japanese names here. We're not seeing uh, Mexican names here. We're not seeing any other kind of names here. We're seeing Chinese names only on this list, except for those two Vietnamese. We need to find a way to sort this out because it hurts the image, like I said, of Chinese Americans and other Asians because they it, it is a nationality issue, like I said, not a racial issue. So the, the normal everyday Chinese American is appalled by this too. They do want their children to be able to go to the beach and see a starfish, which right now, even according to these articles, even though starfish are not allowed to be taken, so many have been taken that it's very rare to even see them now. And they don't think that this area can ever really recover from such over harvesting. <clears throat> I don't know what we can do, whether it is putting Chi Chinese signs up in simplified Chinese, because remember, it is a language barrier thing. A lot of the people that are doing this kind of thing cannot speak English, maybe putting up signs in Chinese, maybe having some wildlife wardens of Chinese descent who can speak Chinese in these areas to warn people not to break the law, because that's the problem. Unless they're confronted, they will just continue to do this kind of damage to local ecologies around. And I'm talking about the fishing fleets out there. We need coast guards going out there and chasing them away and telling them you may not destroy the local ecology here. We need wardens and we need signs in our precious ecological areas to be able to tell Chinese tourists and Chinese um, visitors and Chinese immigrants that it's not okay to break the law when it has such a detrimental effect on the future of our ecologies around the world. China has already destroyed its own ecology. Wildlife in China is a rarity. I've said it before, and we've said it before, birds, just to go into the cities, try and see if you can spot birds in China. There are very few. If you got into the wildlife or special mangrove reserves, sure, you'll find some birds, but Everywhere I go around in the States, I can see birds all over the place, little insects and lizards and things. It's not like that in China. China has really gone through some tough times and it's resulted in some devastation to the local ecology within mainland China. But we cannot allow this to spread to the rest of the world. So if you are a mainland Chinese person, a responsible mainland Chinese person, I apologize if it looks like I'm trying to paint you in a bad light because I'm not. But you will agree with me as well that these IEs and these susus that go out there and do these things, they're out of control. And you know it. I know it. Every Chinese friend and family member of mine knows it, that these this specific demographic of Chinese people just cannot be stopped. So to finish this off, I just want to say a big thank you to the responsible people out there that actually do things the correct way and go out and get your fishing license and measure the fish and throw it back if it's too small. And a big screw you to all the people destroying these ecologies and just taking, taking, taking and without regard to other people in the future. Anyway, until next time, you know the drill, guys. As always, stay awesome.